notes, we will be learning how to evaluate inequalities that form within triangles. There are two theorems of inequalities within triangles. The first theorem is the side length and the side measure theorem. So it reads, if one side of a triangle is longer than another side, then the angle opposite the longer side is larger than the angle of the shorter side, which only makes sense. So if 15 is larger than 20, or 11, the angle opposite 15, C, is greater than the angle opposite 11, the measure of A. So again, AB, which is 15, is greater than BC, so therefore their angles that are opposite of them are also greater than one another. Let's look at some applications of this theorem. So we'll start with angle or problem one, triangle ABC. So the directions say to list the sides and the angles in order from smallest to largest. So I like to list my angles according to their measure. So I'm going to start with the angle that has the smallest measure. So that one's 48 degrees. The next angle is 53 degrees. And the next size angle is 79 degrees. So now it's easy to list from there the corresponding angles. So 48 is angle B. 40 or 53 is angle A. And 79 is angle C. So now I've listed them from least or smallest to largest. Now do their sides. Their sides are always the opposite of the angle. So angle B's side will go first, which is side AC. Angle A's will go next, which is side CB or BC. And then angle C, the opposite side, is side AB. So if you look at number two, go ahead and make the change. That 109 should be 108. From there, now, the reason I changed that is that angles do have to add up to 180 degrees to make a triangle per our triangle sum theorem. So now you're able to make a triangle and list the angles from smallest, which is 25 degrees, 47 degrees, and 108 degrees. Now do the angle um, names. Angle E is 25. Angle G is 47, and angle F is 108. Now let's do their sides. Their sides are their opposites. So the shortest angle, or the smallest angle, is 30, 25 degrees, so the opposite side is going to be the shortest side, which only makes sense because it opens the smallest amount. Now go to F, excuse me, G, opposite side is EF. And then F, which is going to be our largest side, E, G. Now we can do the same thing, but looking at the sides. So obviously, 7 is the smallest side. 13, excuse me, 10, and then 13. So let's do the side measures, of ang or the side name. For 7 is PQ. The side for 10 is PR. And the side for 13 is QR. Now the angles are going to be the opposite of the side. So the smallest side. So opposite of that is the smallest angle. So that's R. PQ, smallest side. So opposite of that is the smallest angle. So whatever opened up to make that side. And 13 was the largest, so opposite of that would have been angle P. And once again, you can do that with 4. So we have 18, 20, and 28. So looking at the sides, 18 is XY. 20 is YZ. And 28 is XZ. Now go the opposite angles opposite of 18, the angle would be Z. The next smallest side is 20, so what makes that side? Angle X does. And the next one is 28, what makes that side? Angle Y.
The next of our theorems is the triangle inequality theorem. This theorem says that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side. So this is important for, to note that the sum, which means the addition of any two sides, is greater than the length of the third side. So adding two sides in, the sum should always be greater than whatever the third side is by itself. So let's look at how we would apply this. So let's suppose we have a triangle with sides 6, 7, and 8. We first want to see, is this even a triangle? Is it possible to be a triangle? It has to meet the triangle inequality theorem. So is it possible to construct a triangle from this? So in other words, you might have this happening right here. I don't know necessarily if it's a triangle. Maybe this is side six, this is side seven, and this side is eight. I don't know yet if they meet up here. So right now, these are like arcs. They may meet up there or they may not. So let's see. By the theorem, the sum of two of the sides has to be greater than the third side. So I'm going to add six plus seven is 13. 13 is greater than 8. So is this a triangle? Yes, it would construct a triangle when we finish this. Let's check. And it's always wise to check the two smaller sides because obviously the two larger sides are going to be greater than the, than the smaller one. But always check the two smaller sides added together. So again, I'm going to check 8 plus 2. That's 10. That is to be greater than 11. However, 10 is not greater than 11. So this is not true. So no, this would not construct. So if I had a triangle that I wanted to see if it was constructed, and this side was 2, and this side was 8, and this side was 11, these would not come up and make a full triangle. Now look at, let's look at some examples of the application of this theorem with some triangles. So number seven says, what if we have two sides that we know, for example, five centimeters and nine centimeters, and we're trying to find possibilities for the third side. So what you would do is you would take the three sides and assume two possibilities. X could be the largest side, or X could be somewhere between the nine and the five. We know that making 9 the larger side. We know that um, x probably is going to be less than 5, or even if it is, 9 would be the largest one. So you make two inequalities. Let's pretend that x is the largest side. So that means 5 plus 9 would be have to be greater than x. So what are the possibilities there? The x has to be 14 is as large as x. x would have to be large, or smaller than 14 to satisfy that. The other option is if 9 is the largest side. So we would take 5 plus x, and that would have to be greater than 9. Solving that, you would move the 5 to the other side, so x would be have, have to be greater than 4. So our two possibilities is x has to be somewhere between 4 and 14 to satisfy both conditions. Look at it, 8, so if we have 7 inches, 12 inches, and x inches. Well, if 12 is the largest side, so that would be 7 plus x has to be greater than 12. So subtract our 7 from both sides, so x has to be greater than 5. Or that x is the greatest side, so we'd say 7 plus 12 is greater than x. So 9, 19 is greater than x. So in other words, x has to be somewhere in between. Our lowest level range is 5 and our highest range is 19. So it's somewhere between those, can't be exactly those, but has to be somewhere between those. So what about here if we don't know the third side and they give us an expression? Same idea, you have 10, 16, and 2x plus 2 as your sides. So same condition. 16 could either be the largest side or the 2x plus 2 could be the largest side. Cannot go by the figures because they're not necessarily drawn to scale. So you have two options. Let's first do 
that the 2x plus 2 is the largest side. So let's take 10 plus 16. This have to be greater than 2x plus 2. Solve that. So that's 26 is greater than 2x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. So 24 greater than 2x. So dividing 2, um, 12 is greater than x. So 12 is the largest. So if we wanted to do a second example, I'm going to erase this to give myself room. So we're going to do the lower bound saying that 16 is the largest um, side. So that would be 10 plus 2x plus 2. Those are the two other sides and where 16 is the largest. So those two added together would be greater than 16. Combine your like term. So that's 12 plus 2x is greater than 16. And then we're going to simplify. So subtract over our 12. So 2x is greater than 4. So x dividing our 2. So x is greater than 2. So what were our two options? We had x would have to be between the greater, the largest range would be 12, and the slower range is 2. So there's the application of the two triangle inequality theorems. So now I think you'll take time and do some practice.